ladies and gentlemen, for almost six months now, Iran has been witnessing a national uprising for freedom and for democracy. An uprising that we are proud to say has been led by women and the youth of Iran. However, this role has certainly not emerged overnight, and in fact, it has been forged in over 40 years of struggle against a misogynistic and a religious fascism dictating Iran that has legalized all violence against women and that has established a system of discrimination and of sexual segregation. The women of Iran have paid an exceptionally high price for this resistance. These years of resistance have resulted in thousands of political prisoners being tortured and of course being executed. During this current uprising that was of course triggered by the horrific murder in custody of Mahsa Amini, the world was amazed by the courage and the bravery of Iranian women and youth as they stood in front of brutal and repressive state forces. The world was stunned and the Mullahs were certainly caught off guard. But as Mrs. Maryam Rajavi, the President-elect of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, said many years ago, the Mullahs will be swept away and they'll be swept, swept away by women, a force that they have never taken into account. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, the uprising in Iran is not a women's liberation movement. Women are asking for nothing from this regime. Instead, Iranian women know all too well, as all freedom-loving Iranians do, that their true emancipation, democracy, freedom and liberty will only be achieved by the overthrow of this regime in its entirety. The women and the men and the youth of Iran have explicitly rejected all forms of dictatorship in Iran. This is evidenced by the slogan chanted, the length and the breadth of our homeland, and that is, no Shah, no Mullahs, freedom and equality for all. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of our homeland look to the future and not to the past. We look forward to a bright horizon of a democratic republic with a free elections, with separation of a religion and state, and equality for women, and of course, political participation and leadership of women at the very top of the country. That is a society without misogyny, a society without violence, and a society without discrimination. Thank you.